Hello, my name is Stephen Johnson. Uh, today we're going to tie a Puglisi peanut butter. Uh, I first heard of the peanut butter from Tarpon Guides in Mexico. It's a very adaptable pattern that can be tied in many colors and sizes. Some of my personal favorites are chartreuse and white and black and purple. Today I will tie a simplified version of the Puglisi pinfish, which is a peanut butter variant. So you want to use monofilament thread, Danville Superfine is what I have on now, and start your tie at the hook point and go back to the tangent point, which is which is the place where the where the hook shank starts to bend, and then move back to the hook point to start a base. Trim that off. We're going to use some red EP silky fibers for the gills. And just tie them in like that. And trim. Do a little bit of mess there. And then turn it under. These gills won't show as well in the, in the finished fly, but once you get the fly wet, they'll really pop out. Next, we're going to put on a little bit of flash. Not too much, not too much flash. Enrico says you don't want a Christmas tree, just a little bit of flash. And this is a little bit difficult to deal with, but just tie it in like that, flip it over. Not worried about the length right now, we'll be trimming that off. And essentially, this fly is composed of four and a half steps. What you want to do is Take bunches off of the off of the hank from uh, EP fibers, and uh, split out a small amount. The biggest mistake people make tying this fly is they use too much material. You want about that much material for a size three odd hook. Okay, so I'll show you again about that much material. Not as much as you had thought. I'm thinking. So cut this material at about the uh, three-fifths point, okay, and then taper the fibers. What I mean by taper is pull on this side, pull them out, and then back on this side, pull them out so that the, the tips aren't, so there's not a flat junction there. And then tie it in at approximately the center this gauge make sure it's about the same length okay try and make sure that it's covering both sides well now I'll take some of the bait fish belly or the polar fiber Taper that material. Tie on one side. Come over the top. Tie on that side. Make sure that the fibers are pretty close to meeting under there. What you want to do is try and maintain a lateral line between the two colors. Put a little bit of flash on. Again, not too much, just a little. You can be somewhat cavalier with this. Put some glue on the top, a very little bit, a very little bit. And that's the end of step one of our four and a half steps. Step two is the same as step one. So take your pinfish fibers, lay them on top, 
make sure it's about the center. Tie down and fold over. Take a look at the other side, make sure that's what you want. Again, try and maintain that lateral line. And then take the polar fiber. Tie it in on one side. Fold it over. Tie it in on the other side. Make sure the, the fibers are meeting on the bottom there. Okay, just a little bit of flash. That actually might be too much, but we can we can pull that out. A little bit of glue, not too much. And that's the end of step two. Step three, cut about, oh, two to three fifths. It's not that critical. Taper the fibers. Tie them in in a V on top. This is what I mean by a V. Tie them in like that. Okay. Cut about three fifths. Split them in half. You're going to tie half of it down below on this side, half of it down below on this side. Taper the fibers. I'm going to do my, my side first, and I'll show you your side. Taper the fibers. That's the end of step three. So now we go to step four. Just like step three, Taper the fibers. Tie them in a V on the top. Take the polar fibers. And you should probably trim some off, but not critical. Split them in half, taper, always taper, and I'll do it on the other side, your side. So that's the end of step four. Here's step one half. Taper, always taper. Purpose of step one half is to get the back of the head aligned the same and to give it a little bit more bulk on the top.
make a nice head. Oops. Whip finish. Just a little bit of glue. I've left the hook shank bare so I can add a weed guard later. Now I'm going to trim the fly. When you use EP fibers, a lot of people have a tendency to take the material and pull it back like this and trim it. That doesn't really work that well with the EP fibers because when you get it wet, it just comes out like this. It fluffs up. So what you need to do is trim it so that the fly looks like you want it to when it's wet. I will often take a comb and just even it out like that, like that. Oop. Okay, establish the length. One thing you want to do is use scissors with longer blades. If you try this with your fly tying scissors, it will not work well, it really as well as in my opinion at least. So instead of just, you know, with fly tying scissors, you'd be doing this nip, nip, nip. Just go ahead, be brave, be bold, cut it like that. You'll ruin a few, but you know, you'll get it and eventually it'll, it'll work out just fine. So now you can vary the profile depending on how you trim it. I like to get the, the general fly shape and I'll put in the eyes. And, uh, and then if, if I am not happy with it, I will spend some time uh, really making it pretty. It's not really necessary for the sake of this video though. Okay, now we're ready for the eyes. And I'm going to place the fly down on the desk. There are a couple of tricks to putting in the eyes. Things you will need will be some zap goo, a clean bodkin. You want to make sure you get all the all the dry uh, glue and cement off of there because it makes it easier to extract the bodkin. cautery pen. I recommend you get the replaceable battery type. Okay. Now you want to put your eye about roughly halfway between the back of the head and the gills. And be sure and put your fingers here because if the cautery tool is not quite hot enough, uh, sometimes the fibers will stick to the tool and when you pull it up, you'll pull out some fibers. Another trick is to not just stick the cautery tool into, into the fibers. What I like to do is heat up the tool, back off, and then burn a hole. What you want is a direct connection between the hook shank and the back of the eye.
put a small amount of glue. And twist your bodkin out. Take your plastic eyes and prepare them by trimming off the shank. Leave just a small amount. Now to keep from disrupting the eye that I just glued in, I get a pair of scissors and place that on there like that. Another small amount of glue. Twist it out. Oop. A little bit of glue on my finger, not a big deal. Prepare your eye. Oop. These devils can be hard to hold on to at times. Okay, now is a good time to continue to trim, just get it. You can make it just about any profile. You can make a wide profile, narrow profile. But this is essentially the fly. This is essentially the peanut butter. And uh, you, you can uh, put stripes on it. You can put dots on it, all kinds of things. I like to use a, the cool gray. Uh, marker. If you use black, it's it's obnoxious. So I'll just stripe it with a cool gray marker. When you get it wet, that will show up well. And there you have deep greasy peanut butter.